mistakes people make when throwing the round kick. If you do like this content, boxing or kickboxing, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Starting number one, we'd like to start from the ground up. So the major importance is your foot. A lot of people don't lift on the ball of their foot when they're throwing the round kick. See how he was flat footed? He wasn't able to get a full pivot in his knee or in his hips because he's not lifted. So let's go ahead and show a lifted. Perfect. The main objective is that you want your foot or your heel to be facing your bag or your opponent by the end of the kick. See how his heel is facing the bag? That's gonna allow you the mobility that you need and also so you don't cause any damage on your knee. Let's move into number two. Turning your hips over properly. Let's go ahead and show them the way that it needs to look. As you can see, starting from the ground, turning in the hips, then the kick comes through like a whip. And that's really what you want to feel. It creates momentum in your kick and it causes damage. Another thing is when we kick in Muay Thai, we're wanting to kick through the bag, not at the bag. We don't wanna just kick at the bag. We wanna launch it through the bag. Number three, we want to be using our arms properly, keeping our lead hand up. And for beginners, you can pull it down to your hip like a seat belt. Perfect, just like that. The reason why is because your arms help balance you when you're kicking and your arms help create momentum as you're striking. As you pull it to your hip, it's all coming together at the same time. You pull it to your hip and it creates your hip to turn over to help with that power on the bag. Let's show them how you would kick if you were more advanced, how you would use your arms. Perfect. See how he's creating that space, pulling his arm over, not to his hip, but over? The reason why is if Aaron's facing me and we're fighting, go ahead, throw it, bop. I can't come in because he's creating that distance and he's defending himself so I can't strike. Go again. Now if I throw a cross, he's protecting his face so I can't strike back. So it's very important having good arm placement, keeping one up by your head, pulling the other down to your hip. Let's show them the switch kick. See how he's protecting himself? Exact same mechanic applies, even on the switch kick, making sure that we, we turn, lift on our toe, turn over our hip, and keep our hands up. I think it's important to note that generally speaking, you're gonna keep this arm up if you're closer range, if you're closer to your opponent. Yeah. But if you're further and you lean back and you're out of striking range, you can drop that hand by your hips. So it really depends on the range. Absolutely. Number four, we want to strike with the right part of the body. Now I know in a lot of kickboxing martial arts, they do teach to strike with the foot, but in Muay Thai, we want to use the shin. The shin is more durable and your shin starts just under your knee all the way down to your ankle. So this is a closer range. You are gonna have to get closer to strike with the shin. I can't be out here because then I'm gonna hit with the foot all day. I like to post up, put my hand up, one small step back to ensure that I'm striking with the shin every single time. Hitting with the shin. Do you hear that thud? Now I want you to, I want you to kick with your foot. Do you hear that? That's a pop sound. Now kick with your shin. Thud sound. That's the difference in the strike with your foot and with your shin. Kicking with your foot is still effective, but if you really want to dent and break, which is the Muay Thai way, use your shin. It takes time to calcify the bones. You have to hit hard surfaces, hard backs that really condition the shins. In Thailand, they like to kick trees sometimes. And sometimes people will take broomsticks and they'll break it up and down the shin or smack it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I just prefer kicking the heavy bag. Just find a new one that hasn't been kicked before, kick it away, take some time, and then build up the cal calcification yep. on your shin. This is a great bag to start out on. Soft enough, so it's not gonna kill you. And number five, coming back to your original stance. This is very important. All of these tips are important, but this one is as well. Just like you do in, in throwing a punch, the return, of the strike to your face is just as important as the initial strike, bringing it back as quick as possible. The same thing when you throw a kick, your retraction, go ahead and kick me in the leg, your retraction is just as important to whip your kick back in place. And not just that, it's also to help defend. So throw the kick, it helps set him up to where I can't attack him and strike him because he's back in his original stance. So this time let's try check. Throw the kick. 
perfect. He's ready to check when he's back in his stance. Another reason why coming back to your stance is so important is because it helps balance you. It's really hard to leave your leg out there and to stay on balance without falling over if you're not pulling it back to where it needs to go. Now you had a really fun fact about coming back to your stance about not being too bladed. or not. The hard too. part when you're kicking is that when you come off the kick, to not come back here sideways because now I can't check or strike. So when I come back to my stance, I gotta be in that perfect stance where there's a straight line down the middle. My lead leg's on one side, my rear leg's on the other. I'm not too sideways, and I'm also not too square because then I'm too open. Like I said about all these tips, it's very important. Number one, being lifted on the ball of your foot. Start with the basics, start from the ground and work your way up. Number two is turning your hip over properly. This is to help generate power. I'm not saying that you won't have a strong kick if you don't, but you can have the strongest kick if you do. And a way that you can kind of feel the movement is stand, alternating your arms and your hips opposite direction to help you feel a switch. This is what your hips should feel like when you're turning over your hips. Number three is using your arms properly. Make sure you're pulling it and you're whipping it around, creating balance, but also helping create momentum as you're kicking. Number four is using the right part of your body, shin. And number five is returning to your stance so you're ready to defend, but also so you keep yourself on balance. Now, these are only five common mistakes when it comes to throwing roundhouse kicks. We also can go over the other kicks, but make sure you like and subscribe if you want more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one. Quick.